I think it will be s- speed of implementation because you can, you can learn a how to, but you don't really know it until you've done it. And then you start understanding the nuance and all, and like how, what is um, the saying? Like the devil is in the details. And it's, it's true. You can learn how to do outbound sales, how to make call calls, how to do door to door sales. Like you can read a how to book, but before, until you do it, you don't understand. Okay. I should approach like this. My, my body should be positioned like this. This is my tonality. These are the words I should use. That's all the stuff you learn by doing. So I think there's a saying in like um, a lot of the communities where you can have a dumb person that comes in, implements everything rapidly, doesn't ask questions. Like here's the ABC. He does ABC, doesn't ask questions and he gets the result. And then you have the smart ass that comes in and it's like, oh, but what if he did A like this or B like this and C like this? And he spends two months kind of trying to optimize something instead of doing it. So I think speed is massive. Getting out of your own way and just implementing without questioning. Sure. is the first thing that yeah. came to mind. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I mean, bias for action came to mind when you said that too, just thinking about uh, some of the, and by the way, Amazon, uh, the, the, the company Amazon, they publish these leadership principles um, that they you know, expect a lot of uh, the people that work for them to, to go by and all these things. So uh, even though, you know, it may not like Amazon, a corporation or evil or blah, 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 like that, you don't, don't read, don't learn to be virtuous. You know, don't, don't only learn from those things, even if you don't like them. A lot of those, I think you can, I'll actually, I'll get the link and drop in the chat, but a lot of those leadership principles I've went over before and I thought about, and when you said that, Jake, bias for action came to mind. It's like, that's what I feel like has helped me so much is I'm able to, I see a problem, go solve it. I see something, go do it and, uh, and follow through, not just do it and then go halfway and be like, oh, this sucks. So like, like, no, if, if, you know, there's, there's, you need to learn how to quit too at a certain point. If it's going nowhere and you're spending a lot of time on it, there, that's a different story, but if you're able to keep that momentum, first of all, recognize what you need to do. Second of all, execute on that and then keep the momentum where you actually finish up, finish with that and you produce something out of it and something that you can keep compounding yourself with. Bias for action has been one of my, uh, my, my top things that I've, I feel like have helped me become a uh, successful one or, or at least conquer a lot of the things I want to do. Um, Matt, Maxim, what, what do you think? What did, what would you be uh, missing or what have you used the most? Uh, yeah. what, what couldn't you live without? to achieve the the wealth and the, the mindset and the the success you've had so far yeah let me let me just start answering you tell me if this is helpful or not i feel like uh one thought that is pretty commonly on my mind is you can have like a couple things you want but you can't have everything and i think that that applies to to so much of life Um, and it's really important when someone's setting their goals that they know what they actually want. And in the reason that's important is because you're going to have to give up things for those. If you don't know what your hierarchy of values are, you're not going to know what to give up for those things. And you're going to have to do it. If you want to be very, very, very good at one thing, you're going to have to give up other things for it. If inside of you, you're, you're having a battle that I really don't want this because of this. And you're, you're never going to go anywhere. Knowing what you want is very important. I think also believing that you can do it is very important. Uh, For me, listening to other people that have, one common realization I have is that these people are not that special. They've, uh, They've achieved special things. They're not that smart. They're not that clever. They're not that genetically gifted. Sometimes, you know, they are a little bit one way, you know, extreme in certain areas, but overall, for what they've achieved, which is sometimes million times more than other people, they're not million times smarter. And in hearing these stories, reading biographies or whatever of people helps me believe I can do that. Maybe I won't be a billionaire, but at least I can easily achieve a million or a couple million or whatever. That's that all of a sudden becomes believable. And I think that's important because you will not take action if you don't believe you can. And also when it comes to uh discipline i think discipline is is commonly misunderstood people think discipline is trying harder and usually that is not in my opinion the case discipline comes from for example when you have a goal that is so good that you're willing to give up something for it, you automatically you're like i want to get up in the morning because man if i can make this work that'd be so incredible the discipline just follows and you can set up scenarios like if, if it's weight loss well don't fill your house with uh just a bunch of sugar don't make yes. it so you have to rely on this discipline that you don't have. I know I don't have it, but I understand how to hack the system. And uh, but yeah, so anyway, setting setting clear goals, being really specific, continually working on what are those real goals? What does that exactly mean? What is a million dollars? When is a million dollars? 
Is it a million dollars cash flow? Is it a million dollars net worth? Um, but just defining it, it doesn't have to be money um, either. It applies to anything. Believing you can, and then go find people that have done it. Find people that are a step or two ahead of you. Listen to what they've what they've done. Don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, go out there and and implement what other people have done. Uh, those things are really important. I think the eighty twenty rule is really really valuable. Mm-hmm. There's there's a, almost an infinite number of ways to do things wrong, and there's a few ways that that a uh, few things that you can tweak right now that will really leap you forward. And there's a million ways to do things wrong. Um, it, like just try to focus on and, and ask myself what are the things that matter most, and and it and all of that to me, like the uh, Stephen. I think it's Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, start with the end in mind is is a good continually uh, uh, in my mind. And yeah, start with the end. Believe you can. Listen to people that have done it, that are better than you. And and then and evaluate yourself along the way. Like, okay, uh, you know, where am I at today relative to the goal? That'll help clarify what those... 20% of things that matter are that are going to help you getting there that are going to help you get there. And and then another thing is understand that you're not going to get there in a day. Um, it's going to take usually very, very simple daily steps that over time will add up. And if you, if you stop partway, like you were saying, which most people do, you will not achieve it. You're going to have to like wealth rarely comes that, especially if, if the wealth is going to stick, it rarely comes in a year. It usually takes five or ten years or more, and if you're if you're able to um, stick with something for like five years or ten years, it, to, in my experience, it starts slower than you think. Like at like the first month, you're like, w- "Where am I?" Like I've done nothing, but five years in, you're like, "How in the world did I get this far?" Like I can't believe yeah. how far I've gotten, and and it, it's I don't know. Those are thoughts that come to my mind. Just on the diet or the not keeping stuff around your house that you don't want to have anything to do with. If you, everyone out there, if you want to start a diet today, uh, the best thing you could do is go in your kitchen or go in your cupboard, take out all the sugary stuff, all the stuff that you know you shouldn't be eating, go to your trash can, throw it in the trash can. Don't think about how much it costs. Don't think about, oh, I mean, unless, okay, like don't starve yourself or anything. If you actually, if you actually don't have a lot of money, then maybe don't do this. But like if you, if you have plenty of resources and stuff, Go throw it away. Take it out the trash. Don't think anything else about it. Now you can't go. Eat, you can't go eat the cookies or the ice cream if they're not in the fridge or in the cupboard. And then you can then like once you've you know did the cleansing, like set everything out that can't tempt you like that. Now you can think about okay, what do I want to eat? What do I want to go buy? What do I want to like fill my house with? Fill full of stuff that's going to make you healthy, you know, and and not tempt you and and not put you in bad situations where you know you're going to gain all the weight back and all that stuff. So. Anyways, that's one of the first things I did several times in my life for diets is I went in the kitchen. Don't think about how much it costs. Don't think about wasting the money. I know that hurts, but still throw it away. Get it out of your sight. If you can't see it and you can't touch it, you can't eat it. It's simple. One of the ideas that you guys kind of, there's also something I learned from Harmozi. He says this a lot where advanced people never not do the basics. And I love that saying. Yes. So I'll give I'll give an example. Like for instance, in business, when I, when I ran a marketing agency in the beginning, when I did local businesses, I would go to these like client acquisition courses, and it was like, okay, you do cold calls. This is a script you follow. You say this. You book meetings, and then I will go through, and I'm like, this can't be it. This is too simple. And you constantly start looking for the more complex answer, and then you have like guys like Hermosi are like, okay, this is a script. Now all that matters is, okay, how many dials are you making? How many meetings are you booking? And those are yeah. the only two things that actually matter. And people think as people move <laughs> up in business that they stop doing that stuff but that's not true yes. they just hire people to do that stuff the basics still happen the advanced yes. people are actually a lot better than at the basics than the basic people it's yeah yes. it's advanced people never not do the basics and this whole like this can be it mentality like one of the examples I, I like giving is one of one of the biggest like i think painful mindsets that people have like the poor mindset is i'll do it all by myself like i posted this tweet i think yesterday is self-made is such a damn myth we're just a combination of the people that came before us, we consume that information. So we're not self-made. We are made by them with a combination of a combination of all of the information we've consumed. And it's like this whole, I, I'll do it all by myself mentality. Imagine this, you go to a fighting gym, 
and you walk into the fighting gym and you're like, yeah, coach, don't worry. You don't need me. To, you don't need to teach me anything. I'll just start throwing my hands around. I'm moving my body. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'll be fine. Self-made then, fighter. <laughs> exactly. Just like throw your hands around and shit like that. and never listen to the actual coach. And then business people approach it like that. And crypto people approach it like that. Like, okay, just generate cash flow in the real world. Put it into good cryptos that have product market fit during good timings in the market. It can't be that simple. Let, let me go down the shit cone road. Let me go down the 100x leverage load. And then they, they're forced to kind of confront the truth after they lose all of their money instead of just realizing it shouldn't be complex. The simple things work. Advanced people never not do the yes. basics. They do the basics more consistent for longer at a yep. higher quality and more reps. <laughs> a lot of it. times I, I think why businesses fail is because they grow so fast they forget the basics. Like... It, 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 it really, and I mean, you're saying like, I've tried to say that in a lot of my videos, I'm, I'm not trying to make things complex. I'm trying to make them simple. And, and it's the same, like, that's why some of these books are good. Cause they remind you what the foundations are. What's those simple truths. Then you can take them with you everywhere and, and apply them. But they're, they're usually, once you see them, they're not complex. They're very straightforward. Um, like actually care for your customer try to provide actual value. That should be one of the very top things. And if you're not doing that, if you're overcomplicating, trying to, to lie or like make yourself look this way, all like, that's great. You can refine how your message is, is, is portrayed and things like that. But if your actual value is not there, guess what? In the long run, it won't work. And it, it, is that a complex idea? Is that rocket science? Do I sound so smart <laughs> for saying that? I don't think so. But it's amazing how, like, like just believing the some of those foundational things are, are, are the simple things, and they do play out over time, and, and I, it it does work well. I love what uh, Naval says uh, about uh, you know getting rich too. Uh, he just talks about you know do you know get get rich first and then figure out what you want to do. But once once it happens, you you probably figure out that's not what you wanted in the first place. Like that's what yeah. you weren't going for. Yeah swimming in a pool of money you were going for you know financial freedom you're going for yes. owning your own time all those things and i love yep. the way he puts it because so many people are just ah, i gotta do everything it takes to get rich and that's great motivation and and maybe it'll work for you maybe it'll take you in the in the direction you need to go or, or maybe it'll take you down another less virtuous road but that it's it's once you get there it'll be like oh i, I wanted to get rich but I really just wanted to be left alone yeah. you know you'll, you'll have some other deeper meaning that, that you that don't even know know yet that's the truth for me is like, I realized that independence and freedom, I value a lot. And, and I realized that there was a way that I could play the game that I was giving up all my independence and freedom for money. And I realized that money's a re what I, like, that was the like money wasn't the end goal. It was for me, very high values of independence and freedom. And, and, and I had a, a, a switch in my own thinking when it's like, like for me right now, I want to make as much money as I can while being independent and free. And uh, it, it's just because just I don't want to counteract what I think is for me really valuable. And and I, yeah, it, it, you reminded me of that with what you said, Max. Yes. Yes, it's, it's, um, it's one of those things that you don't really, you, it's almost, I thought about this before, you get so, or at least I'll, I'll say my personal experience, I get so, like just it's a it's a huge motivator um wealth in, in general and wealth and yeah and everything that comes along with it and you it's almost like when you think about it you're like oh should i be what do i really want what should i be focused on but then i, I don't even want to get out of that mode because that mode is such a a driver it's such it's it's like that's the driver but once you get to the destination it's you get you can get whatever you want you can choose your own thing after that but you need some sort of driver whether it's getting rich to give it all away or getting rich to, for generational wealth or getting rich to, you know, set yourself up to do foundations or, or buy a company or start a company and all, all these things, whatever your goal is, you need some sort of driver. So I guess I, I just, to me, it's, it's like, don't feel whatever your driver is. Don't feel guilty about that driver. But once you get there, wherever you're going, then make sure you make good decisions, then make sure you understand and maybe you figure this out along the way, what you actually want, or maybe it takes you getting there first, but whatever it is, make sure it, it's okay if it's different once you get there. It's okay, like be okay with that. 